Who's who? All right, this will be the second podcast for the Every Grain of... Your name is Chunkus? The Every Grain of Sand is that podcast. Um, this is episode 28. Are you this guy? Um, you go. We're going to do a real quick uh, synopsis and background, and then we will jump into okay, the game. Um, last time, the, the group started in the veil, made it out of the, uh, the world between worlds, and uh, woke up after having a good long conversation with a Raren named Termer. Uh, Raren is one of the races of the setting. Um, they are the only race that could be even described as undead. Um, they are the self-imposed uh, keepers of law and order. Uh, once they woke up, they headed north and decided that they really didn't want to talk to anyone in Catrace. So had <laughs> Bross, the, uh, the innkeeper, or the current innkeeper, um, the interim in innkeeper, distract everyone, so everyone in the town, so that um, they could go and stay in their house and stay quiet and avoid everyone. If this uh, was not our usual distract method. Right, this no. is this is the world's version of distract, yes. not the party's version of distract. This is lowercase d distract. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so everyone headed through Catrace and then headed north to Kanai. Um, on the journey there, we had some creepy things occur. Maybe everyone's body and pieces of their soul put into voodoo dolls, which were carried around, or not. I, what? No souls. no souls. I don't remember any of that. I don't I'm know just how saying that her, her, gla her grass dolls are creepy. Oh! That's all I'm saying. They're now, <laughs> um, headed into Kanai. Uh, at the border, talked to a guard. Um, to help them figure out where things were in the city, and they got a little bit of an acquaintance with the house system and some of the major houses in the city. Um, heading into the city, they decided they needed to go to a major shop and the inn. Got to the inn, got everything settled, got introduced a new character, who is not going to be joining us anymore. Um, but got everything sit situated at the pristine silver chimes, um, also called the chimes by the locals. Uh, and got everything situated there. While there, one of the characters decided that he would really like to play a game of chance, and it ended up not being so much chance as he wins everything. <laughs> so when it was noticed that he wins every time, some of the nobles of the city decided to take him on a trip to some place that was a little bit more affluent to cash in a little better. That whole plan worked out for everyone involved except for all of the other people. <laughs> um, got there and have started a rumor that is, uh, has already come back around the city that this is something that happened years and years ago of this wild tale of impossible odds of winning at dice. Yeah. Um, the man lose. Then one of the next, or the next day, headed to hey, the magic shop and the blacksmith shop. At the magic shop, they met Kirukanjaru, who is the sprite leader, or sorry, the sprite owner of the magic shop, um, who they spent a good amount of time talking to him in the last podcast, and he was interesting. Interesting, <laughs> um, but told them that um, there was a. Uh, I don't remember what, what all he, the. What did he tell you guys about Pavel? Um, Pavel had gone out to. Pavel had gone out to hunt to the hunt the bogars. the bogars, and he failed miserably. Failed miserably, lost most of his companions, came back, and his mind, gone. his mind was messed up. Right. You were able to learn that uh, one of the things that happened was when he came back, before his mind was completely messed up, he came to Kidukan in order to find a solution to this problem. And Kidukan uh, helped him by uh, creating a spear. Right. Um, and you guys got a little bit of information about what the spear does and where it is. Not truly understanding what the uh, the creature was that they were hunting, um, Kirukan did, did not uh, advise them making the spear correctly, so the uh, if Poggle indeed did find the Bogarsh and was able to fight it, the Bogarsh would have been trapped within Poggle's soul. Oops. Which, is not instead of just being overwhelmed and destroyed by Poggle's soul, might be having the reverse effect. Um... Talked to him a little bit, found out some things about rituals, and showed him the Red Namian Shard. Which uh, he got super excited about. Which he got very excited about. And he was able to keep the Red Namian Shard in return for uh, giving them, giving you guys all the information he can about it, and also uh, helping you guys with the spear should you bring it back. 
Um, there was a lot also of talk a significant of, store discount. Right. Store discount, and also um, he said that he would do his best to make something special for the group. Um, so that was most of what happened with KiddoCon. Then over to the other shop where you guys met uh, da, 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 da. Anama. Anama. Anama Nasima. Yeah. Um, uh, who is Second chance. Hakuna Matata. Sure. Wonderful. Right. Who is a blacksmith and also one of the chancellors of a fairly uh, affluent house. I like her. Um, in Paris mentioned, she's a crocodile. Yes, she is a <laughs> crocodile talikma, um, who is fairly large and knows exactly what what's going on when she does her thing. Um, was able to craft something for Chunk. Um, and possibly give you guys something at the uh, shop. And after she was impressed by a display from Toy, yeah. um, gave Toy a Reaper's Axe. Mm -hmm. And shiny new toy. So Toy has a new toy, which you do need to update your character sheet to reflect that you now have plus one to right. attacks, and that your critical does something different. All right, your critical, yeah, critical and the, the property is a little different. Um, okay. After that, Headed back to the chimes, and we ended it that night? Yeah, we ended it right around yeah. there. Yes, and oh no, after that, it was so midday, everyone split off to do their individual things. So this will be the cut for the, um, the summary part of the podcast. Um, rather, if you guys are actually, we'll, we'll wait and do that in a second, and then do the quest log. So let's do the quest log. Please try to go as fast as possible. Don't interrupt unless you have something to add. Okay. Temple of Niosis, Zenlin. Update, we come back, when we come back, we delivered Zenlin to his sister. Once we delivered Zenlin to his sister, Zenlin created a, mar a new mark to kill himself if the Solarium tried to take control. Now Zenlin is missing. Pick up the Bogarsh jar. Capture the Bogarsh. We picked up the Bogarsh jar and Chalet from Anu. Chalet's jar is now in the Bogarsh jar. And we have discovered that a man named Toggle Kalenta, the first chancellor for House Kalenta, hunted the Bogarsh, have arranged with Aaron, his bodyguard, to meet Toggle. As a side, Kiddo Kanjaru wishes us to bring him the spear he crafted for Toggle to help him capture and destroy the Bogarsh. Find Chiron. We found Chiron. He's in a camp built by Wirix near Greencrest on the road between Catrace and the Second Kingdom. He's completely dominated, and it might be that he will never recover. Whee! Don't get killed by Draken. So far, so good. So far, so good. Woo! Kill the Junket. Bastards. We have discovered that there are one four leaders of, of the Junket. Note one, we have killed the first leader, Minolt. Um, we have also discovered um, that if we can bring down the Junket, it will accomplish several things for us. It will allow us to complete the Fix Indra and don't get killed by Draken quests. <laughs> Fix Indra. <laughs> Found a Saul named Anu, who in exchange for capturing some poison elementals, created a stopgap for the poison in Indra's body until we could get the antidote. Second update. We believe Draken has the original flower. Which I don't remember the name of, so it wasn't included. Uh, Took... Something did. Right. Took Indra to Glim in the edge of the Hylar, Glenn will protect Indra for one year. Okay. Figure out about the Nambian crystal. Update. We funneled a strange life spell into the crystal, and Iris now has amnesia. We need to figure out more about the spell in the crystal. Update. Kidukan, Jaru, and Kanine is looking into what the crystal is all about for us. Okay. Next one. Find out more information regarding the strange cubes that Chunk has found. We've gotten all the way down to... Pretty much we found out what they were. They're a psychic technology and made of Fashik. Um, the Weirix on the, that built the Weirix town in near Greencrust um, have the little things in their brains and the window want them destroyed. There is an overlord on an island in the middle of the Green Lake in the Hylar and we might potentially need to deal with him as part of that quest. Find out what happened to Morgad, the city on the first continent of the mountains that went over to the Vale due to a plague or a slaughter. <laughs> Added that part to it. Thank you. Find out more about Legion and discover his weakness. Maybe even find him. Go to all the continents. We have checked off the second continent as we have been there all along. 
continue to get to the veil and back alive. So is okay. there a way to reverse Iris's amnesia from the life water spell? Why do Iris and other children have the ability to rebuild pieces of the Shining City? What exactly are the tattoos or marks that we carry? Um, we have discovered that the tattoos are known as the marks of the Ascendants. <coughs> Kirukan seems to know more about the marks, um, but we haven't really had a chance to ask. Kill the Soul Slayer. Um, there's a whole quest line on activate the chess piece. Um, we were instructed to go to the island of the lighthouse. We were to distract the man there who happens to be Manolt, the boss of Tyrell. Carol. We went to the island with the lighthouse, and into the lighthouse we fought Carol and Manolt. We found the earth elemental that Chunkus has been looking for bound into the Manolt. We distracted Manolt successfully and found a miniature obelisk and another sprite named Amulet. We found out that the obelisk is what the guy who made Jack the chess piece was after. The aspect of Albion that we freed from Manolt is heading back home to fight for his kingdom. We killed Terrell. Well, specifically, he we killed Terrell. Okay. Successfully distracted. Phoebe stole the obelisk from us Jack and left town. Chunkus is quite angry about it. We must find her and her boss and get the obelisk back, or at the very least, get revenge. Yes. She may be distracted. As an aside of the aspect of Albion, Kreshaw Check reclaimed his heart and the title with Chunkus's and our help. Ta-da! Okay. Meet the aspects. We've met the aspect of Revelit, and we've met the aspect of Albion. Um, and I've added, well, one quest to the quest log. Find the father and mother of the shadow child who died in the veil in the nightmare. And distract them. What happened to Peony's <laughs> grove mate, and is she still around? All right, and that'll be a pause for the moment. And We're all right. Sprite. <laughs> so, as we start to get into this, um, everyone has gone about their, their business, doing their things in Kanine. Um, if people have not talked to me between games about what they are doing, um, we can do that between uh, this game and next. I will put up uh, on the blog a summary from each one of the characters when they went off and did their own thing. One of the key parts about being in town is if they have anything to do rather than spend time on it, we all do it um, individually through emails and Facebook and that sort of stuff. Unless something is very specific to needing to be done, like last session's visit to Kira Um So you guys all kind of go about, do your things, um, return back to the chimes um, at a little bit before dinner. Um, your meals have been paid and your everything has been situated. Just so. as a note, Huey comes in and looks annoyed and is muttering things about how she hates the city and she wants out. <laughs> um, so... I saw some dirt yesterday. Was did someone let Amulet go by no. herself? Uh, I don't know. Did Amulet oh, okay. decide to go travel around by herself? Because I imagine she, she would, would if someone didn't. Um, I would probably keep an eye on her. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> who would... Sorry, I'm imagine... Sure keep her. Um, crazy. <laughs> imagine the sprite... Uh, Vin and Irish probably spent most of the, the day in the magic shop, um, and those sorts of things. And Hazel had her thing that probably would take her quite a while. I do not know what Jack, uh, Chunkus, and Amulet did, but who do you think would be the first person back to the end from the group? Define first. The early <laughs> That could potentially either be the person that concludes soonest or the last person to leave. Probably me, because I imagine that she'll probably just be so fascinated she'll get lost around unless Chunkus drags her back. He's going to be lost in the magic shop. Right. And Jack is rarely back early from anything. Are, are there, are, are there <laughs> the Did he bring it back, back in morning? <laughs> Alright, but you have meals at the chimes that, and you've had two of them now, and they're very good. Um, so right. they're already prepaid for. It, so. Um, not that money is a particular issue to the group right now. That's the most important thing when being in the city is that, well, these are meals that are good and are paid for. That's, that's yep. the first thing on Jack's mind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but Literally. everyone does have a plan. Um, at least two people in the group know about meeting Aaron. So mm -hmm. at least two people here know that there is a Raren to meet um, <coughs> at the Chimes. So if Kiwi is going to be the first person back, um, the innkeeper will come up to you as you walk in mm -hmm. um, and hand you a stack of letters saying that you have 
since you all arrived, have been getting some uh, some mail. Um, We've got mail. What? <laughs> he was like, so he stand, hands you a sack of seven or eight letters, um, and you see that all the letters are sealed. And as you kind of start to look through the first couple, you see very obviously that there are house signs imprinted on the outside of each of the letters. That's what it looks like. I've read this book. So, <laughs> so on the outside of the thing are house signs. As you flip through the letters, the last letter where a house sign would be, there is instead a diagram with 13 points. Something you are very familiar with oh, because it's tattooed one. somewhere inside of your body. Yeah. Um, you see the one of the letters doesn't have any markings on it except for a very large seal of the ascendant. Um, She's going to wait on that one only because she'd rather the whole group be there before she opens it. The other one, she'll kind of open and flip through. Um, the other ones, um, they all say varying degrees of the same thing. They are all from different houses in the city. Mm -hmm. um, basically talking about bringing, out. bringing in new money. Um, well, we do some, that. <laughs> to some degree, some talk about, you know, where are you from? What are you doing? You know, offering of services, that sort of stuff. Um, the easiest way to, to go about it is that people in the city have noticed that you are bringing money mm -hmm. and want to oh, get a part of it. Well, yes, uh, want yeah, to be part of it in that. whatever way they can <laughs> until they learn enough about you to figure out why you have money and how deep the well can go. So oh, yeah. that's basically what the the list consists of. Great. I have a whole bunch of advertisements from solicitors. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's basically what it is. Junk mail. Time. <laughs> that's essentially... Are there any coupons? Um... <laughs> As you guys, yeah, hey, here's, you, here's you've had a deal with knowing store. kind of which houses are which, you kind of knowing which houses are sponsored as you've been going to the orphanages. Um, the only house that is would be considered a major house that has sent you anything is House Code and Bottle. Um, they they have actually sent you a, a letter, and that's the only one she of the major She figures houses. that's probably because of Jack. So. <laughs> Possibly. And also because they deal with a lot of the merchant stuff in the city. I think it has something to do with toy put my remember dance and show person. Mm -hmm. that I don't was, know if I could DN yet, so I don't want to Yeah, that was That was different. Nisema. That wasn't oh, code oh, yeah. I was going to say, is Nisema in there? Nisema's not in there. Nisema is one of the major houses, and you did not get a, a letter from them. Awesome. They know what's up. Okay. He we just... He kind of puts those aside. She'll give them to the group when they get in. <clears> She's going to hold off on opening the other one to the until time. the rest of the group is there. So... And she will sit down in the... There, there is a small garden on the patio, okay. um, which, if if you wouldn't mind sitting in it, the, the innkeeper would appreciate it. She will go sit <laughs> in the garden, and she does let him know that she is expecting Aaron to show up. She, um, what? Innkeeper she, Okay, she does Email let him. the she does let the innkeeper her know that um, yeah. the, you know, she is expecting a rare in named Aaron to show up, and if she could please direct him out to the patio. Um, the innkeeper nods her head and says, "Oh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with Aaron. He is he stayed here before. Um, before the others return, I don't know how to how to say this politely, <laughs> but you need to get the hell out of my room. <laughs> my my daughters can seem to promise more than what they should." <laughs> sometimes out on the floor, <laughs> and while they are old enough to take care of themselves, <laughs> it is understood that people who visit my inn do not visit my daughters. It's a good thing you passed that. I will speak with Jack about this. Oh dear. <laughs> and she nods her head and, and, and walks out. I don't think it's too late already on that one, is it? No, well, no. I, I think you passed that one. Right then. <laughs> you actually have to roll. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so you guys start to filter back in. Um, <laughs> so, assuming that dinner time is 6 o'clock and nightfall is about 8 o'clock, what time do you guys want to meander back into the inn uh, before... Well, then she'll have to drag Toy back in. She'd be looking at all the shinies. Okay. So <laughs> eventually Iris has to drag Vin back in and be looking at all the shinies. Um, you will not have had access to most of the higher level spells. 
basically the only thing that you would be able to have access to is the first floor. Remember the three floor back mm -hmm. up? The first floor is going to be left kind of unattended and open, so you can go around and inspect everything. But um, basically, as soon as he's allowed to, Kirukan and uh, Jollyon are going to be working on doing everything they can to understand the crystal that you've given them. Okay. Um, so that's going to be <coughs> taking up most of the shop. Um, they want to close so, the shop down for it. They are. They, they are closing the shop down, but they basically... But they're not going to let me run through the shop willy-nilly while they work on stuff. They didn't kick... They closed the shop, but then they didn't kick him out. Nah, that was... Alright. Yesterday. And then... <laughs> I was going to say that was dumb, but... You know, whatever. Oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, what time do you think you're heading back to the end? Nah, 7 ish 7 ish well, About 7.30. 7.30? Good thing that wasn't... And... Uh, Jack... Distracted by all the priests? Um, entirely possible. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time Jack's been back in the city in a while. Um, yeah. There are places. I will let you know um, that at some point during the morning, Luke found you and gave you the necklace. And if you choose to wear the necklace... I have to take off the cape. Uh, no, no, no. It's, okay. it's, not a, it's not a magical necklace. It's just a, an ornament. Yeah, yeah. If you choose to wear the necklace, it will possibly alter your encounterings in the city, given that the story has already started to spread. I wanted it for a reason. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> so, if you choose to wear the necklace, um, as you're going about doing your your business, you haven't noticed that your luck is especially good or especially bad. You've just kind of been normal since then. And a couple people will talk to you about it. And before nightfall, um, you have seen someone else with a similar necklace to yours. Um, and some of the people who, 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 just, who talk to you about this, they seem like they're, they're, they're interested in the story, and other people are definitely interested in not staying near you for very long. Um, you've noticed a couple of the, the, the barkeepers, uh, barkeeps, they won't kick you out, but they do kind of, uh, serve you last. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, here's your drink, you have a good day, take yes. it easy, sir. That is that is what's happened um, at more than one establishment in the city. Did they make me go in and out the back door? No. <laughs> it's just fast. It's they set your first drink down and say, "Here's one for the road." Yeah. Basically. <laughs> you have a good day. We, you know, we know you're a very busy person. You can't stay. The only long. the only thing on Jackson's do list is to go and meet this blacksmith with a really cool hammer because that seems like a clever thing that Jack doesn't speak before. Okay, so uh, going there. Would you want to spend any time? Because he had, uh, she, sorry, has a um, a lot of open spots in her thing where apprentices would work. Um, would you talk to her about getting paid for your work? Because she has a lot of sort of grunt work that needs doing. Um, that does not take a lot of skill, basically. Um, and you could be paid a very small amount for doing it. Or if you want, there's some people that do just come and practice. I, I, mostly that's Jack's interest. Um, is to just get the swing of hammer again. Um, so, because I'm kind of torn there. On one side, Jack and doing things for free don't exactly coincide, um, but this is sort of special. So I'm going to say no. It'd be just for the okay. fun. Yeah. So, um, go in, just start to work. It'd be like if you took a job setting things on fire, he'd be like, I, 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 I already got paid. Like, so, <laughs> there's nothing going on. Um, so she... <laughs> Basically notices you working at, at the um, at, at the the smithy, and you do some simple stuff, um, making the horseshoes but not actually shoeing the horses, the making binders for for barrels and other sorts of just basic things that need to be made around in large quantities. Um, <coughs> when would you want to stop doing that in order to return to the end? Because it's going to be since you're not used to it, it's going to be really tiring. Yeah, I was going to basically once I'm once I can't swing it anymore, okay. would be the point where jacket quit. So, so, ten minutes after he gets here. <laughs> so I'd say that would probably be closer to six, since you, it was still morning when you guys found the blacksmith. So, alright, so you get in probably second or third. So once everyone gets in, um, you guys see Hiwi, and there's been a table that's been brought over to the little garden area, because this innkeep wants to uh, keep her in the garden as long as, <laughs> as, uh, as politely possible. possible. Um, they don't know what the gardening thing is. Right. Um, for, for people that are listening on the podcast and for the two people who are 
listening in at game, um, Saul are plant people, and they don't eat um, like normal, uh, normal creatures. Um, they take uh, materials and, and a lot of waste and put it inside of their body, and then they feed it through their body into the ground um, and have a near supernatural ability to make things grow around them. So many inns will have things like herb gardens and those sorts of things where they do really want to have, you know, the more herbs that they get grown, the more they can add spices to their food, and it's very good for business. So whenever a Saul visits an inn, generally speaking, they're given a free room, and their free room is the gar in the, the garden. garden. Um, so, and a lot of Saul are okay with this. Yes. Most so that's, of that's what they do anyways. That's what they so. Do anyways. so they're basically organic composters. Correct. Um, only the, the the big difference is they just do it very quickly. 